Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Let's give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Grace and peace and welcome new hope. Happy Hallelujah. Sunday. We Hallelujah. lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, they run in and they are safe. Come on, let's lift up our voices. Wherever you're watching, whether you're watching from Minnesota, whether you're watching from Alabama, whether you're watching from Tennessee, Canada, let's just begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, yeah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's just lift up praise. Yes, Lord. You brought us a mighty long way. Hallelujah. You kept us, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You have kept our minds. Glory to God. You kept our families. Glory to your name. We say that there is none like you in all the earth. Yes, Lord. Who can compare to our God? None at the earth. Hallelujah. Who is like Jehovah? The one that parted the Red Sea. The one that carried the cross of Calvary. The one that bled our one side. The one water came. Who is like our God? None and like the earth. We lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. For at that name every knee shall bow. At that name every tongue shall confess. At that name demon tremble. Yes. It's at that name. This morning Father we lift up the name of Jesus. Let Jesus be lifted in America. Let Jesus be lifted in Carrier. Let Jesus be lifted in 2307 Rhode Island Treater let Jesus you say father if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me so this morning we lift you up be lifted in this place be exalted in this place be magnified in this place be enlarged in this place yes it's the name of Jesus that healed our bodies it's the name of Jesus that saved our souls it's the name of Jesus come on lift up Jesus oh. hey. lift up that Toshiah it's Jesus hey the one that was the one that is and is to come it's Jesus it's the one Mary's baby it's Jesus we lift you up Uh -huh. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, oh, it's Sunday. Oh, you told Oh, yes. It's the name of Jesus. Come on. Oh, it's the name of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Yeshua. It's the blood of the King of the Jews. It's the blood of the persecuted one. It's the blood of Jesus. Oh, yes. I feel power. Hey, it's that name. It's that name. Come on, wherever you are, just cry out the name Jesus. Wherever you are, cry out that name. Come on, just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. We ain't got eloquent words. Dictionary can't confine you. Oh, but we say Jesus. Oh, we say Jesus. Oh, we say Jesus. <laughs> oh yes it is hey oh yes it is oh yes it is 
Oh, yes it is. Ah, yes it is. Yes, it's the name of Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we can't move past that name of Jesus. Hey, because it's the only reason we survived COVID. It's the name of Jesus. It's the only reason you have not lost your mind. It's the name of Jesus. It's the only reason if you did lose your mind, you're still here. It's the name of Jesus. It's the only reason that bullet couldn't take you out. It's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel Jesus in this room. <laughs> oh, Mateke Hey, it's the Hey, it's Hey, Oh, I want to move and let this go, but it's the name. Hey, it's the name of Jesus. Let's just take a moment and celebrate Jesus. Come on, that's low. Celebrate Jesus. It reaches to the lowest. Ah, it reaches to the highest mountain. <laughs> oh, the blood of Jesus. Yes, that gives me strength. This gives me strength. It's the blood of Jesus. It gives me strength. It's the blood of Jesus. From day, yes, Lord. To day, yes, Lord. From day, yes, Lord. To day, yes, Lord. From day to day. From day to day. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. I need you to think about that for a moment. It's the blood. Pierced in one side. Yes, Lord. I told you. Pierced in one side came the blood. Hey, yes, God. Out one side came water. But the water was my savior. The blood was. I give the blood of Jesus praise in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I give our scripture reading? And for those of you who understand the power of this scripture, we'll give him praise. Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. Hey, in him will I trust. Shall he? he shall deliver me from the snares of the fowler, from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thy trust. Thy truth shall be thy buckler. This is the praising part. Thy shall not be afraid of the terror that flyeth by night, nor the arrow that cometh by day. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come near thee. Yes, Lord, shall not come near thee. Come on, praise him with me. It shall not come near thee. Come on, put your hands together and give your God some praise. For he is the one that calls the thing not to come near thee. Still looking cute on a Sunday morning. COVID didn't take you out. Cause it shall not come near me. 
church this morning <laughs> you didn't come to be cute you said no I want God this morning I've been through hell all week the devil been on my back he's been after my kids I didn't have to bury a friend a family member a loved one hey, I didn't come to play church this morning I came for what God got for me I'm under an open heaven so I came for what the Lord has for me Now with the hands of our praise team. Hallelujah. 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 We come this morning thanking God for waking us up this morning. We come to give him glory. We come to give him honor. We come to give God praise. Hallelujah. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, join in with us.
Come on, put those hands together and bless God right where you are. Has God been good to anybody in here besides me? Then open up your mouth and say, hallelujah. 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 It's a real simple song that we can all sing together. Is it all right?
Your name is holy. Hallelujah. You are so holy to me. Hallelujah. Help me say. I call you holy. Your name is holy.
Because they're going to try to diagnose you with something and you don't know what's going on with your body. But you don't want to sing this song over yourself. You are a healer to me. Oh, I call you healer. Your name is healer. your hands and receive it. His healing power is in the room. I said his healing power is in the room. Do you believe it? Oh, come on, I said his healing power is in the room. Y'all get it. Come on, his healing power is in the room. I just felt something slip in here. Come on. I just felt something slip in the room. The healer is here. I said the healer is here. The healer is here. The healer. Oh, the healer is here. The healer is here. The, yeah, it's better. The healer is here. The healer is here. I said the healer is here. glory. Somebody needs to stop being cute because the healer saved your life. If it had not been for the healer in the room, you would have died a long time ago. And I'm not just talking about in your body. I'm talking about in your mind. I'm talking about in your emotions. I'm talking about in your heart. I come against every spirit of depression and every spirit of suicide. Y'all better come on with it. I feel warfare in this room. I feel warfare. I, I feel warfare. I feel warfare. I feel war. I thank God. Listen, I know it's gonna sound crazy, but the best thing COVID did for us is free us. It freed us. We ain't gotta have religious church. We don't gotta have religious church. I'm telling you, we don't have to be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But religion goes with worship. I don't wanna have church. We want religion, but no worship. God is here. And we move according to how God wants us to move. Come on! I feel the healer in the room. Don't worry about anybody that gets offended by your worship. I'm sorry if you're offended by my worship. I'm sorry if you're offended. I'm really not sorry. But don't be offended by my worship. I've been through too much. Today. And we invite heaven to come where we are. I said, we invite heaven to come where we are. I'm waiting till everybody in the room gets the memo. I'm waiting till everybody in the room gets the memo. Everybody in the room. Everybody in the room. And on the day of Pentecost, they were with one accord in one place. And the Spirit of God fell. It means the musicians got to worship. It means the nurses got to worship. It means the mothers got to worship. The sound team has to worship. Everybody, deacons, preachers, pastors, open your mouth, lift your hands, bend your back. Father, we humble ourselves before you. Oh, we humble ourselves before you. We humble ourselves before you. We humble ourselves. We don't have a problem with bowing low because if it had not been for the Lord, it is of the Lord's mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies. We are not consumed. It is of the Lord's mercies. We are not consumed. It is of the Lord's mercies. We are not consumed. I need you to rest in that because the healer is here. We speak healing. We come against sickness, all manner of sickness and disease. We come against sin sickness. James says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. We speak the prayer of faith atmosphere. The angels are here. The angels are 
here. The angels are here. The angels are here. And we welcome the host of heaven this morning. Those of you who are watching, I dare you to welcome the host of heaven where you are. Those of you watching online, welcome heaven where you are. Welcome heaven where you are. Hallelujah. While you're standing to your feet, get your Bibles in your hand. I feel something moving this morning. by these Levites intercessor intercessory prayer prophet Allen and these awesome minstrels worship team you all did an amazing job we are now in the presence of the Lord we are now in the presence of the Lord we are now in the presence of the Lord we're going to the book of Revelation of Revelation. I hope y'all been praying. I made you aware on last week of the warfare surrounding this book of what the devil desires to do when you begin to enter into this book. And I hope you've been praying. We're going to dig deeper. So good to see many of your faces. We honor the presence of our First Lady this morning. And the first baby, if you will. <laughs> we give God praise for each and every one of you to see your faces. Mama Stewart, Angie, it's so good to see you all as always. I love y'all. I want to tell y'all, I love you for what you did on yesterday. I got a call from Quenisha this morning just thanking you all for thanking me and thanking everyone for getting her through that time. You have no idea the struggles of planning it if you've never done it before. Having to plan your husband's funeral and then having to get him from one state to another. And every step of the way we were there and New Hope, when I called on you and told you, hey, it's too heavy for me. I need you. You all stepped up. I love the I love the love that New Hope has. And even from whatever state we're in, we always come together. Angie putting the music together for me, and we just work together. We don't have, we don't have time for all of those titles and whose job is it and who. We just get to work and do what needs to be done. And I thank God for you guys. I don't want to start naming people because somebody's feelings gonna get hurt. You know who you are, you know what you did, and I appreciate you and I love you for what you did. We had some major church in here on yesterday. And I'm glad y'all shouted and danced because I don't know how much shouting and dance we're going to do this morning. Uh, I just want to open this word up, but I guarantee you, lives will be changed. Media team, I want you to get your fingers ready. Go to those scriptures quick, all right? Get your fingers ready because we got a lot of Bible that we're going to dig into on today. We got a lot of Bible we're going to dig into on today. Revelation, this is our, for now, in these two messages, this is our base scripture. Chapter 14, good to see you, Jason. Revelation chapter 14, verse number 2. Revelation chapter 14, verse number 2. This is, this is verse 12, I'm sorry, verse 12, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. This is our base scripture, we will be all over in the book of Revelations and even in Genesis, but this is our base scripture for this morning. I hope y'all came ready to learn something. Here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. I'll read it again. Here is the patience of the saints. You go up, you'll read about all of these things that Satan himself 
is trying to do to the church. And this verse right here, smack dab in the middle of the book of Revelation, is the sole purpose of this book. He waits until chapter 14 to tell us why he's really writing this book. The book of Revelation is to help with the patience of the saints that while we are enduring persecution, while we are going through, we are to be patient. We are to keep the commandments of God and the faith that is in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is trying to get us to understand that trials and tribulation are not a reason to lose faith. You may be seated. I just want to talk, continue to talk about the patience and faith of the church. The patience and faith of the church. As we started, and you'll see, last week we started to open this up and we ended with a theme of overcoming. We ended with a theme of overcoming and we will pick up with that theme on today, the theme of overcoming. It's good to see my sons in church this morning. And I say that, I'm gonna say it all summer because come August, they'll be gone. <laughs> so every day I cherish being able to look at them on Sundays um, because life is about to shift and change in the Roberts family, amen. And so it's good to see them while I can um, because it will be sparingly only when they come home from college will I be able to see them, both of them, amen. I'm not gonna start talking right now. One of them graduates Tuesday and amen. Stand up, Sion. We'll be going to Indianapolis to celebrate his graduation. The other one graduates next Sunday. Stand up, Leon. And yes, we will be in church. He don't graduate till five o'clock, so don't be missing church. To my bishop at the graduation, no, bishop will be right here in church praising the Lord beforehand. And I, I don't have time, I'm getting ready to preach, but I just interrupted my introduction with them uh, because, and I know there's some other graduates, but I gotta talk about them briefly because they grew up in this church. They've been with me in ministry every step of, step of the way. In 2005, when I took the pastorate, um, Leon was three, Sion was two, and Jeremiah was some months old. And here we are all of these years later at graduation time. And nobody but God, nobody but God. My son got the email uh, the other day about him um, meeting the core 40 requirements um, and officially being done with high school and he just went into worship into his room because it was no, y'all don't know the story, amen. But it was nobody but God that did it, amen. And we thank God. So let me get to preaching before I get to crying. Amen. So let me get to preaching. Uh, th this book, and we, we started this theme on last week. Um, for those of you who watched us online and those of you who were in the sanctuary, you heard us end with the theme of overcoming. That uh, it's important to understand that there are scriptures in the Bible and certain um, topics and certain things, hear me, that God does inspect, expect us to endure. The word endurance is there. Endure hardness like a good soldier. There are certain things he expects us to endure. But as it relates to the book of Revelation and this particular prophecy of the persecution that God is expecting us to make it through, he does not use the word endure. For what we are experiencing now, and you go home and you research it, we are literally through every prophecy in the Bible. Christ could return at any time. And, and, and this is why the closer we get to his return, the more you have to fight, as Jude said, earnestly contend for your faith. That word contend is not to be taken lightly. It literally tells you you're going to have to fight to keep believing what you believe because there is a ve very much a spirit, a influence in the world that seeks to draw you away 
from your belief and your faith. And James makes it clear. I don't want to, I feel like I'm going into another vein, so I'm going to try to make sure I stay in this vein of the book of Revelation. But James makes it clear that when we are drawn away, we are drawn away of our own lust. So what the devil is going to do is he's going to dangle something in your face that you desire and that you like that will cause you to lose faith to lose faith and will pull you away. Leisure and things that you like and desire has taken over faith. Uh, it, it is more popular now to go on vacation and to rest and to spend your weekends doing what you want to do than it is to go to church because we have moved into a time where you must earnestly contend for your faith. And this book of Revelation is God is trying to make it clear. I do not in this last hour expect for you to endure. I don't want you to just make it through it. Are y'all hear me? I don't want you to just hunker down and get through like somebody who goes into a bomb shelter waiting on the hurricane to pass. I expect that you will do more than endure. I expect that you will overcome. It's one thing to endure, it's another thing to overcome. Because when I overcome, it means that I fought and I won. Y'all don't want to have no church. No, 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 no. Anybody ever had a real fight? If you endure the fight, you lost. <laughs> Y'all don't want to have... If you just endure in the fight, what you're saying is I'm taking all the punches, I'm letting them punch me, and I just made it through to the end of the fight. That means you lost, sweetheart. I hate to tell you. God said, I'm not expecting you to endure this persecution. I'm expecting you to overcome it. It means you fight and you win because we know the book of Revelation tells us that in the end, we win. Here's why the devil fights so hard for us not to deal with the book of Revelation. I am 41 years old and I can count maybe on two hands the amount of times I've heard any message preached out of the book of Revelation or any significant message. If it's a message, it's very surface. Nobody wants to touch the book of Revelation. Nobody wants to deal with it. And in their defense, sometimes it's not just an intellectual issue because I have heard many intellectuals that will be able to decipher what the book is saying. And in many cases, it's not a spiritual issue because I have come across many spiritual people that are able to, to, to get revelation to be able to understand the book. It is a warfare issue because the devil fights people to stay away from this book and the reason he fights is because he does not want you to know that there is a cheat code in this book that this book is giving you what you need to be able to look beyond the persecution and to be able to see that I can get through this because the book tells me that I'm going to win in the end can I help you understand it I don't hope I'm not moving too fast it's kind of like when Jesus told the disciples let us go to the other side and then the storm came but they already had the cheat code they should not have panicked in the storm because when Jesus says let us go over to the other side it meant that no matter what storm came you're going to make it to the other side the devil is fighting you because revelation is the word that you're going to make it to the other side so even though I'm enduring persecution and I'm going through all manner of persecution the reason I keep fighting is because I know I am going to win and this book helps the believer it helps the church endure current and future persecution and the persecution will come in all manner of directions you will endure persecution in your faith the devil will try to make you lose faith you will endure persecution in your mind the devil in the last day will come after the minds of the believers more believers will be going into panic attacks and depression and the devil will make, be making you try, make, trying to make you think that you're losing your mind. The devil's going to come after your health, which is the reason why you got to make sure you're doing the right thing to take care of yourself because he wants to come after your health. And we as African American people, we bury people and we blame it on God. It was just their time. But the truth of the matter is some of us are leaving before our time because we are not taking care of ourselves. Come on. Come on somebody. You're 
your body will last longer if you do what you're supposed to do. Some of this stuff can be avoided if we just lose a little weight, if we just drink more water, if we stay away. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I'm not trying to be judgmental. I'm just preaching the truth. If we've got to understand that the devil is going to use these things. I was just telling Brother John, he's going to use certain things, certain devices that you feel like you can't get rid of to make you die early if he can because he knows that you have an assignment on your life and it's time that the church stop glorifying stuff at people's funerals and start telling it like it is before we get to the funeral so that we can begin to help our people live longer these are attacks that are coming to the end time and I thank God that I got all of that other stuff in the first 20 something years of preaching, the first 20 years of my ministry. I got all of that other stuff out my system so I can now be ready to just preach truth. I'm not trying to be impressive. I don't care. I've traveled. I've been well traveled preaching. I've been all over this United States preaching the gospel and I don't believe I'm done yet, but I'm not moved by any of that. Every time you put a microphone in my hand, as long as Lily or whoever else makes sure it works, my job and my goal is to make sure that I am preaching the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ and if the devil does not like it he's got to take that up with God because I have intercessors praying for me and I have angels that are watching over me and I will make sure that the saints understand that this book of revelation is a book that is given to us so that we might endure persecution because it is a book that is given to us so that we might endure persecution, it, it explains to us why it is written by a man who is being persecuted. John, the revelator, is the man who was writing this book, and he is the man who Jesus gave his mother to. When you study John, John actually was the longest living apostle. All of them died early. They got their heads cut off. Many of them uh, were, died horrible deaths. And maybe because he knew John would live the longest, Jesus in his foreknowledge, maybe that's why he gave his mother to him. But John is now being persecuted. And by the way, what we call persecution is not the same as what they would call persecution. What you call persecution has to do with what they say about you on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or what you're going through with your family or with your home. But what they call persecution is the fact that they would have to hide and have church because folks would, come, would show up with swords and ready to cut their heads off and they had to worry about their families and their children dying. So we have very different westernized views on persecution. But John is writing this and while he's writing it, he's being persecuted. He is on an island called Patmos, which is a place that is very unfruitful. There is not a lot of life there. And he is writing one of the greatest revelations, one of the greatest uh, books that, that, are, that exist in the Bible. But he's doing it, watch it, not only while he is being persecuted, but he's doing it in an unfruitful place. I'll say it again, because I want to make sure you don't, you don't miss it. John is doing one of the most historic things that anybody has ever done. He is writing a letter to the church that is timeless because here we are in 2021 preaching about it and God is using it to help believers. But he is writing one of the greatest letters, number one, while he is on being persecuted, been sent or sentenced to spend the rest of his days in the island of Patmos, he is writing one of the greatest letters we have ever seen. Not only is he doing it while he is being persecuted, but he is doing it in an unfruitful place. Don't make me repeat it again, so I'll just make sure I give you the lesson. What you're going through is not an excuse for God not to use you. In fact, 
I will tell you that while the church is in the midst of unfruitfulness, while the church is being persecuted, you will see a revival like you have never seen in the church before. Because John proves to us that you can be in hell and you can be going through hell and you can be pressed on all sides, but God can produce his greatest work in your life. Who am I talking to? I'm, I'm coming to remove excuses from you and I need to tell you that the church is going to live. I'm not talking about the local assemblies. I'm talking about the church of the living God. The local assembly is so that we can come together because I need to tell you that we were never meant to pers be persecuted alone. The reason why church is important is because we're supposed to endure persecution together and the enemy is trying to divide us but I need to tell you to understand that while we are going through that God is going to produce his best work through you. Can you help me prophesy to somebody that's in your local vicinity and just tell them you're about to see the best work of your life. You're going to see God do what he has never done before. What should have died in the midst of unfruitfulness. What should have withered up in the midst of unfruitfulness. God said I'm going to show you that my hand is on you because while unfruitfulness is all around you, you're going to be thriving. I said, you're going to be thriving. You're going to be thriving. He is on this island called Patmos, and this island of Patmos is like Alcatraz. The prison Alcatraz is terrible, terrible, terrible place. And you were sent, listen, you were sent to the island of Patmos because you committed treason against the Roman army. So because the Roman army was the governing body, if you didn't believe what they believed, it was really a political prison. And so if you didn't, you, you, if you didn't believe what they believed, then, you, then you, they, they committed you or they caused you or they charged you with committing treason. Because when you believed Christ, hear me, when you believed Christ, the believer or religion affected directly the Roman politics and the Roman economics. I, I wish I had time, but the truth of the matter is the reason why they crucified Jesus was because the, they, the, the crowd were affecting their money and affecting their politics during the time of the crucifixion. The crowds were gathering because it was Passover week and there were millions of Jews in town and the Roman government said we can't afford for these people to begin to uprise and forget, begin to riot so we need to give them what they desire. The Romans are very 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 or were very 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 interested in your belief system and if you usurped their authority then they would make sure you paid for it they wanted to make sure that Christians were not believing in Jesus Christ because it went directly against what they taught and when you believed in Jesus Christ it meant that you were not going to follow the governing system because Jesus came in doing what the government or what the law said that he should not be doing now let's take it a step further beyond the Roman government even those who were patsies to the Roman government the Pharisees and the Sadducees were very religious people they were supposed to be church people but they could not understand what Jesus was preaching and so when Jesus healed a man on a Sabbath day they begin to get mad because Jesus you're going against what we teach y'all don't want to have church the we're going to have it anyway. You're going against what we teach. Now, it's one thing for Donald Trump or Joe Biden or Barack Obama to have problem with what I'm doing. But now you're telling me that church folk are criticizing what Jesus is doing because it does not fall in line with what they are used to. Here it is. Here are the seven last words of a dying church. We've never done it that way before. Whenever you you want to die or if ever you want to kill something you just stay stuck in the traditions of men but Jesus came in showing them that I'm not concerned about what day it is I'm not concerned about your rules I've got one desire and that is to show you who I really am that I have the ability to love you through your sin that I have the ability to heal you where you hurt and I don't care what your rules are can I talk to some people in here this last day
day church had better learn what's important to Jesus Christ and what COVID did was COVID was the great reset button it allowed us to get rid of religious fact and begin to hit the reset button on church and begin to do what's important to God can I warn y'all I don't know what you might see me preach in one Sunday I might preach in a row with my bishop attire the next Sunday I might have on my my Nike jogging suit because I am not bound by your traditions I am not bound by your religion I am not bound by how you think I should look or how you think I should act this is the reason why I don't care what you wear to church because the truth of the matter is one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord not that I may wear my favorite skirt not that I can wear my three piece suit if I feel like wearing it I'll wear it but the truth of the matter is they told me I couldn't come in church without a skirt on but honestly skirts can be just as inappropriate as pants And while we are arguing over religious stuff, the devil is having his way with us. And folk need to be delivered from drug habits. And we're trying to figure out what we're wearing to church on Sunday. And people need to be delivered from depression and suicide. And we're trying to figure out what we're going to wear to church on Sunday. And folk have real issues. And we're arguing over who did what. And we're mad at people because they made a mistake but we make all the mistakes y'all ain't saying nothing to me in here and we got to understand that I want to be more like Jesus what does that mean? that means this year I want to meet some more sinners and I want to be close to people who got sin problems so that I can introduce them to Jesus I'm not running away from people who made mistakes because I am the poster child for mistakes but I realize that I'm entering the last leg of the race and the devil is turning up the pressure but the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong but it's going to be to the one who's still overcoming in the end look at your neighbor and tell him neighbor God don't care how many times you fail he doesn't care how many times you have fallen a just man falls seven times But the issue is, did you stay on the ground or did you get up and finish the race? Because this is a different race. This is not about who comes in first, second, or third. This is about the one who can overcome to get to the end of the race. I'm not trying to win. I'm trying to get to the end. <laughs> so John is writing to help the church get to the end. Because the end is drawing nigh. And the devil is going to do some things to come against the church. And we got to not be foolish because God has given us the cheat sheet. Now listen, I'm not condoning this, but I'm also not stupid. <laughs> Teacher called my house. I'm sorry, son. <laughs> Said, listen, your son, he, you know, I think he was cheating on the test. And we got that kind of relationship. We just honest with each other. So I asked him. He said, yeah, daddy, I was cheating because I didn't understand what was going on. He said, all right, you know, if you're a senior, get out of there whatever way you can. <laughs> I didn't condone it, but I mean, what I'm going to do? He already did it, you know. But why would you have a cheat sheet in your hand? God said, I'm, I'm telling you in the scripture what the devil is going to do. And you believers refuse to open it up. 
so you can see how the devil is going to attack you. So when all hell is breaking loose, all you see is social media sensationalizing the devil's foolishness. And I'm sitting back like, he told you we was going to get fools in office. <laughs> he told you at some point the wicked would be in authority. He told you that we're coming to a time where many antichrists would rise in preparation for the one antichrist. And we are living in that time right now. And God is saying, Christ, in his letter to us, the book of Revelation, he is saying, I'm not calling you to endure. I'm calling you to overcome it. In other words, this is not for those of you who tuck your tails and be quiet. Oh, Lord, I'm about to get in trouble. I don't care. Let it go viral. You cannot, you are, listen, your silence is choosing your side for you. Because real believers will not be quiet in the face of persecution. You cannot tuck your tail in this time. If you are a believer, now is the time for the church to stand up. Because I didn't call you to just take the punches. I called you to punch back. In the way that I have commission for you to battle in the spirit for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against spiritual wickedness principalities all of these things that are in high places and so he called us to overcome and he called us to overcome together the whole reason for the assembling of ourselves together remember after the apostles after Peter preached they begin to form churches that was the birth of the church the day of Pentecost they formed churches and assemblies because of the fact that God knew that they were going to go through some stuff he knew that they were going to be persecuted they were going to be killed and there is nothing like being together when you're going through and so the devil is trying to isolate us and keep us separated but we were always meant to go through together so that when we come together we can share war stories and we can pray for one another and we can fast with one another and we can begin to encourage one another iron sharpeneth iron and the Bible says forsake not the assembly of yourselves together and that same scripture goes on to talk about this spur and it talks about how we have the ability to help sharpen one another and the reason why he wants us to fellowship is because the church needs to be together not just your local assembly but the nationwide church needs to be unified in this last hour and making sure that we're not turning on one another and criticizing other churches and black Asking other believers for things that y'all don't want to have church. Let's keep moving. Look at somebody and tell them we in this together. We are in this together. I cannot make it without you. And the Bible says, blessed are you when you are persecuted. For great is your reward. I'm moving. I'm almost done. Revelation chapter 4 and 5 helps us. Am I boring y'all? It helps us overcome persecution. So the first three chapters of Revelation are his letters to the churches. When you get to chapter 4 and chapter 5, he starts talking about these awesome visions that he saw in heaven. The reason it helps us to overcome is because whenever you're going through on earth, the best thing you could do is be in touch with heaven. Right? And so the church has got to become more full of worship, which is the reason why worship is the next wave of the church. <sighs> if I had time, I would talk to you about the Tabernacle of David 
and the Levites. And y'all think that a lot of stuff we do in church is foolishness, but it's not foolishness. The most important part, y'all hear me, musicians, y'all hear me, praise singers, the most important part besides me giving the word is the music because it is the music that opens up the heavens. Y'all don't want to have church. Come on, it is the music. And Lucifer was the angel that was in charge of the music. And y'all were at the funeral yesterday. If not, go back, listen to it. And because he was kicked out of heaven, God God created man and made us the worshiping being that is responsible for the glory of God and because of that we have the power to access heaven and so when we access heaven and when the worshipers and when the intercessors all of the Levites the praise team the worshipers the musicians and the intercessors and the prophets and everybody has the ability to access heaven you will see the lifting of burdens like you never seen it before because what happens is it doesn't matter what kind of hell I'm going through in your presence is fullness of joy so I can have a bill do that I don't even know how I'm gonna pay it I can be threatening to be put out of my house car being rep repossessed but when I get into the presence of God it, it's like nothing else matters and if you've never had it if you've never tried it I challenge you to try getting into his presence it lift the heavy burden and it answers questions that you could not answer outside of his presence and so chapter 4 and 5 of Revelation are so key because it gives us a glimpse into heaven and there is nothing that can help you get through hell like getting a glimpse of heaven so I charge, I charge, and I need to understand, need you to understand this. Don't let these words fall to the ground, but I am putting a demand on our Levites. I'm putting a demand on our musicians. I'm putting a demand on our praise team. I'm putting a demand on our intercessors and on our prophets because you cannot endure this last hour of persecution playing with God. You got to press in. You got to press in. You got to press in because you have a responsibility. And those of you that are watching this, if you go to other churches in other states, wherever you are serving, whoever you are, you got to understand. Ashley, she's on. She's in Minnesota, but she's one of our she's one of our intercessors. You got to understand that God is calling you because you have the responsibility of opening the heavens and making sure that when people come in, that they get a glimpse of heaven. What's going on in heaven? and letting heaven touch earth. When you sing the songs of the Lord, heaven responds. Angels come. I need your faith level to rise. Some of y'all can't believe it. I don't, I don't believe in no angels. You bet, you bet your faith better rise. We are literally in concert with heaven. When the minstrels are doing what they need to do, the enemy is distracting us. But we are responsible not only for ourselves. Hear me, minstrels. Hear me, Levites. We're not just responsible for ourselves. Lay members can get away with that. Just having their own relationship, coming to church, no preparation. You got to prepare. Because you are responsible for the masses. You are responsible for other people. You are responsible for the crowd. You're responsible for those watching. You're responsible for those in the sanctuary. They are depending on us to lead them into heavenly places. Because if you're not going to lead me into heavenly places, why even show up? I can go home and stay to myself. If you can't lead me into heavenly places, why even come? So I got to have people around me that are prepared, that take it seriously. So he writes chapters 4 and 5 and he gives us a glimpse around the throne room. Gives us a glimpse of the lamb and the four beasts and the 24 elders and all of these things. And we'll talk a little bit about them as we go. But he begins now, and I'm closing with this, to give us the benefits y'all get ready, of overcoming. Y'all ready? I'm going to finish with this. He gives the church the benefits of overcoming. All right? Go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. We're in school, so just be patient. 
We do a lot of shouting and dancing. We got to learn something. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 7. Watch it. Here's the first benefit. If you overcome, he says you have a right to eat from the tree of life. Are you hearing me? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. To him, notice it doesn't say that endures, right? To him that overcometh. Remember, I told you, the race is about getting to the end. So if you can get through the persecution and overcome it, there's something waiting on you in the end. The first thing is, to him will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Now, it may not mean a whole lot to you, but let's go real quickly, Alan. Let's go to Revelation, I mean, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Let those fingers move. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent. Verse number 22 and 23. Y'all know the story. The enemy tricked Adam and Eve into eating the fruit, and they got put out of the garden. Watch this. And Jehovah God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil, because man was never supposed to know good and evil. We were only supposed to know God. And in God, there is nothing. We don't need nothing else. He can decipher for us what is good and evil. But we ate of this tree, and it opened our eyes to learn good and evil, which we were never supposed to know. Watch this. And now, let us put forth his hand, and also, and I'm sorry, and now lest, lest he put forth his hand, and also take up the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Watch it. He says, because he has eaten of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we got to put him out the garden. And the Bible tells us why he put him out the garden. He put them out the garden because he was afraid that they would now also eat of the tree of life and live forever. Now stay with me. The reason that was a problem for him is because I'm not supposed to have a right to eternal life without Jesus Christ. So since sin came in the world, I now have been separated from God. So what he did was he put your right <laughs> to everlasting life on pause and waited all of these generations until Jesus Christ came. Once Jesus came, now he says, if you accept Jesus, you now have a right to the tree of life. Watch it. This also proves to us that Eden was heaven on earth. Because if that tree of life was in the garden, and it's also going to be in the hereafter, then that means what Adam and Eve was experiencing was heaven. So the same overcoming spirit that Jesus has, God says, when you receive him, I give it to you. And once you overcome, I am giving you a right to the tree of life. So if you overcome, that is how you live forever. You have a right to the tree of life. But the devil does not want you to even, for when is the last time you heard a message on eternal life? When is the last time you heard somebody preaching on the tree? I, listen, we say a lot of stuff in church we didn't know where it came from. I used to hear deacons say this in their prayers, that I may have a right to the tree of life. I ain't never once read the scripture until I grow up and start studying Revelation. But he says, if you overcome, you'll have that right. <laughs> This is why, I tell, tell somebody, this is why I got to make it to the end. This is why I got to make it to the end, because I, I need a right. Here's the second right. Here's the second right. Lord, have mercy. Help us get through it. The second right that he gives us, the second benefit that he gives us is in Revelation, same chapter, chapter 2, right? Go to Revelations 2. 
and it's down in verse 17. He says, for those of you that overcome, let's read it. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Y'all got it? Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him, not that endures, right? To him that what? Say it loud, church. To him that what? Type it in your screen, those of you who are watching. To him that overcometh. Here's another benefit. To him will I give the hidden manna. I'm coming, just stay there. And I will give him a white stone. I'm coming, just stay there. And upon the stone a new name, which no one knoweth, knoweth but he that receiveth it. So, he says, I'm going to give you hidden manna. The word manna means what is it? It means that God has the ability to transform according to what your need is. So, when he fed Israel with manna, what he was giving them is whatever they needed when they needed it. <laughs> he would not describe or define what he was giving them because he's the only being that has the ability to feed everybody with the same dish but give you only what you need. He will never, Jason, let you box him in because he can be whatever he, you need him to be. He even told Moses, Moses, I hope I'm not boring y'all. He even told Moses, but I'm having a whole lot of fun teaching this, so y'all stay with me. He even told Moses, he said, Moses, Moses said, who should I say sent me? He's like, just tell him I am. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not even getting ready to let you box me into a name. Just tell them I am that I am has sent you. It means I will be what I will be. In other words, whatever you need me to be, I'm going to be that. That's who's sending you. If you need me to be Jehovah Jireh, I will provide. If you need me to be Jehovah Nisi, I will fight your battles. If you need me to be Jehovah Rapha, I will heal you. But I'm not going to box myself in because I'm too big for that. And he says, I will give you hidden manna. I will bless you with whatever you need from me. Only to them that overcometh. So all of these days, John, that I spent going without, all of these struggles without a father, some without a mother, lonely, without all the money that I wanted, not being able to get the houses that I wanted, the devil will have you choked up with the cares of this life. But the real church knows that whatever God don't give me, it must mean I don't need it. And I'll, as long as I overcome, I'm going to get hidden manna anyway. Set your affections on things above. Get your mind off the things of this world. Go after whatever you want and get it by all means. But if you don't get it, you can't let it make you suicide because my hope is not in this world anyway. Watch it. If you overcome, I'm giving you hidden matter and I will give him a white stone. Now, I know y'all ain't going to care about this, but it made me shout. I promise you, I, I, I literally had to contain myself. I didn't know what that white stone meant, Angie. But as I studied, I found out Say so we always trying to over-spiritualize stuff. But the book of Revelation is quite literal. It, I thought it was, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, the stone represents Revelation. It does. But back in that day, they would either give you a, when you were convicted of something, they would either give you a white stone or a black stone. A black stone meant you were guilty. I, I'm a preacher somewhere else, y'all ain't got to, but a white stone meant you were innocent. I'm coming to this side because they seem more excited. It meant when you got a white stone, whatever crime you had been convicted of, you were being acquitted for your crime. 
Now, I just want to talk to y'all because they ain't never did nothing. Let me just talk to y'all. I have been guilty of a lot of mess. Not them, just us up here. Have been guilty of a lot of mess. And the fact that if I just keep pushing and overcome, that God's going to hand me a not guilty verdict. Blow! Because the truth of the matter is, there are a lot of people in this room that would have sentenced me to death. They would throw me under the jail and throw away the key because we are living in a judgmental church. But the God that I serve did not say if you're perfect. He said if you overcome, I will. <laughs> give you a white stone look at somebody and say I'm looking for the day I'm looking I'm looking I'm looking for the day that in the midst of all that I have done God will say not guilty y'all missed it by the way I can be here all day y'all got barbecue y'all trying to get to I'm trying to get to if you just overcome I'm not going to preach the rest of this because we'll be here all day I'm done it's, it's four more that I'm going to give you next Sunday because I got to keep y'all coming back it's four more promises that he gives us but he says if you just overcome all of the mess that you have done I will wipe it out and give you a not guilty stone. Who am I talking to? That's the reason why I love David so much. Because David, even though he was a murderer, David, even though he was an adulterer, and David, even though he had a sin problem, David kept chasing after God. The Bible says that David was a man that was after God's heart. It does not mean that he was just shaped after God, but it means that wherever God went, David was chasing God. It meant that David understood that I just got to overcome this, that I'm a mess. In fact, I'm a mess in a half, but I cannot quit. Can I talk to somebody? that's a little bit more like me that you made mistake after mistake that you have been through some dirty mess but you're glad to know this morning that if I just overcome if I don't just endure but if I keep on fighting if I keep on pressing if I keep on praying if I keep on believing, if I keep on trusting God, if I keep on pressing my way, if I keep on singing for him, if I keep on preaching for him, if I keep on interceding for him, if I keep on giving my substance, even when I feel like I'm broke, but I keep on overcoming and saying, Lord, this belongs to you. It gladdens me to know that he will blot out my transgressions. And at the end of the day, he will allow the blood of Jesus to be my attorney because I'm guilty and the devil is before God saying God Kiwin is a mess God Kiwin has done all manner of things God look at Sion he shouldn't be preaching he don't deserve your grace he don't deserve your mercy and God is looking at the devil and saying devil you are right he don't deserve it he is guilty can I get a witness I am guilty but God has to look at the devil and tell the devil there's one problem and the problem 
problem is uh, when I look at him uh, I don't see him uh, all I see uh, is blood uh, he's covered He's covered all in the blood And all I gotta do to get my reward Is when the trouble come Keep on pressing When my trials come Get over it When I feel like quitting just overcome somebody 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 open up your mouth and tell the devil I can't quit I can't give up I can't throw in the towel cuz I got a reward coming I got to make it till I get to the end I have an overcomer anointing uh, on my life uh, somebody uh, give him glory do me a favor uh, look at somebody uh, that you came to church with uh, and tell them uh, I understand it now uh, come on tell them uh, tell that neighbor uh, tell them neighbor I understand it I understand it now What are you talking about Bishop? I understand Why my granddaddy Used to say Weeping may Endure for a night But if you can hold on I can just take the microphone In my office Cause I'm done Weeping may Endure for a night, but it's going to come if you can hold on until the morning. Encourage somebody, point your finger at them, and tell them, Don't you quit? You made it this far, don't you give up? Y'all ain't pointing. Tell somebody you can't quit, you don't even have quit inside of you you made it you made it this far hold on hold on it's almost morning tell them it's almost morning tell them it's almost morning it's almost morning it's almost morning the church, the church is commissioned to overcome. The church is commissioned to be victorious. And if you overcome, I got four more blessings next week that I'll start with that God promises the church. If, if, if we overcome, if we overcome, if it's coming, persecution is coming. The church has not seen persecution like we're going to see. It's going to become increasingly unpopular to be a believer. But if we overcome, we got blessings coming to us. I, I, I will have a right to the tree of life. I will have hidden manna. God promises I will supply every need. I'll get a stone that is a stone of innocence when I know that I'm guilty. And the Bible says he'll write a new name in it. The only person that knows that name is the person receiving the stone. 
if you don't understand it just ask Jacob Jacob was a trickster he was a liar he was a supplanter he literally stole his brother's birthright but God gave him a new name he said you are Israel this is who I made you come on y'all lift your hands all over this place we worship you in the spirit come on lift your hands all over this room we worship you in Come on, lift your hands and begin to worship him. Come on, heaven is here. We worship you in the spirit. We worship you in the truth. We worship you. That's what we that's what we're going to do into the holy of holies come on lift your hands into the holy of holies right where you are even those of you who are watching online that's lift your hands and God is moving in your space wherever you are God is moving said I'm giving you strength to endure I'm fortifying your mind I'm fortifying your mind I'm fortifying your emotions I'm fortifying your spirit you cannot quit grab a hold to the horns of the altar set your feet like hind feet set your face like a flint Overcome, 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 overcome. That's where I want to be. As you lift your hands, receive strength. Continue to work in the minds and the hearts of your people. As I said on last week, I'm challenging each and every one of you to read the book of Revelation out loud. Chapter 2 says, Blessed is anyone who reads this book. And one translation says, out loud. Because the devil wants to keep you away from this book but I speak blessings over your life as you leave this place that God is re-anchoring you and dropping you down deeper in his word he's going to cause you this book is going to be a life raft for you some of you thought you were drowning but this book is going to cause you to stay afloat and come back to shore 
God is about to bless you through this book. There might be somebody here that doesn't know the Lord. There might be somebody here that needs to give him your life. You want to be saved. We're standing to our feet. If you're here, this invitation is for you. There may be somebody online. There may be somebody online who does not know the Lord, who's looking for a church home. If you're here, this invitation is for you. Come, come. Type it on the screen. Tell, tell us and we'll send you a link so that we can connect with you. If you're here, come. Hallelujah. We give God praise for a saved house. I need you to understand, I feel God pulling me to this nation. I don't know what he's doing, but I feel God pulling me. I feel him pulling me. I feel him pulling me. I need your prayers covering me because I feel God pulling me. I, I sense myself in the airwaves. I sense myself traveling. And, and God is going to free some of you to be able to travel with me God said this is a season that we must work in teams God said we're preparing a team to go get this country this nation ready for his return Father we thank you now we appreciate yes God thank you Thank you for the restoration. Listen, we're, we're, we're leaving this place and I want to stay in this high place. Y'all keep singing that. I want to stay in this high place. I want you to prepare your hearts to give in just a minute. I want to thank everybody who helped us yesterday to lay Pastor Garment to rest. This coming Sunday is first Sunday and we will be baptizing Whoever those candidates for baptism are will be baptizing you. I will be getting in the water. So we want you to come prepared for that. Those of you that are watching, those of you that are in here, come ready next week to be baptized. On, on June the, the Saturday before Father's Day. What is that, the 20th? Somebody give me that date. The Saturday before Father's Day. The men, we are preparing something. We're planning it now, but we believe that four o'clock here, we're hoping to be here at four o'clock. We're going to have a men's, thir huh? 13th, that's not the Saturday before Father's Day. Huh? The 19th, thank you. All right, uh, the Saturday before Father's Day, whatever date that is, the 19th. We will be here at four o'clock, men, You'll hear more information. We're get, gathering it now. I've been talking to the men. We're going to come here. We're going to barbecue. Um, if there's a game on, we're going to watch it. We're going to enjoy each other's company. I'm going to have my sons. They don't know it yet, but we're going to bring the gaming system. I have a couple of other ones. We're going to let them do a tournament uh, on, the, on the game. And we're just going to let the fathers hang with the sons on that day. Uh, any child that does not have a father, we welcome that child to come. And we're going to connect with that child. So, Lanisha, you can help us with that. Any child that does not have a father, any, any male child that does not have a father. It's a father and son day. We want to start at four because we have a wedding here earlier that day. All right? So that's the Saturday before Father's Day. And then on Father's Day, everybody say Father's Day. All right? Oh, say Father's Day the same way y'all say Mother's Day. Amen. Thank you. Some little pitiful Father's Day shelves y'all be giving us in the stores. <laughs> Father's Day, all right? We're going to meet here. The men are going to meet here at 8 a.m. and we're going to pray on Father's Day, all the men. Women, y'all welcome to come sit in the back and watch us or pray with us, but the men, all men, wave your hand, men. We want to meet here at 8 o'clock and we want to pray. We want to pray. We want to pray. I know it's unconventional. I know it may throw your schedule off a, a, a little bit, but I, I just believe something happens when men come together and pray. And then at the Father's Day, on that during service that day, we're going to get whatever the women are going to do, all right? So we thank God for, just remember, we, we, we did right by the mothers, all right? On Mother's Day, we took care of y'all. Amen. 
Um, so Father's Day is going to be an awesome weekend for the men. Um, we have a new environmental art ministry that will be responsible for enhancing the beauty of our church, both inside and out. If, you're, if you are interested, please contact our office. We need to make sure that we are, now that COVID is, is, is we, we've gotten a handle on some of the things and we're understanding more about it and we're coming back to church. We need to make sure our church stays beautiful. So uh, those of you who want to help with that, please contact the office. Uh, let's keep in mind on Tuesday night, tune in for TNT. Uh, our Pilgrim Assemblies Midwest Regional Meeting is tonight. We need you to tune in to that. All right. And then also keep in mind our next leadership meeting by Zoom will take place on Monday, June the 7th. So I'm sorry, our next members meeting. We've been, we, we had our first all members. It was for all members and we had a Zoom meeting. How many of you know COVID taught us we can do more than just meet at the church? We had a Zoom meeting with all of our church members and a lot of y'all were not on, but a lot were on. So we wanna make sure that you have, you're ready for that. That's gonna be Monday, June the 7th. It's gonna take place by Zoom. Monday, June the 7th. At, uh, at both of them will be at 6 p.m. So we have our members meeting Monday, June the 7th. Somebody say all members. Monday, June the 7th. Leadership meeting will take place Thursday, June the 10th. Both of them will be at 6 o'clock. All right. The office will send out the Zoom link. God bless you. We want to stay in contact with you. Let's stand. We're getting ready to go home. We're getting ready to go home. We're going to go home singing that. All right. We're getting ready to go home. God bless you. Thank you so much for those of you that worship with us. Those of you online, the ways to give should be appearing on your screen. We need you to give. We need those of you who the Lord has blessed you with some sort of income to be a blessing to the body of Christ. We want to do real ministry. We have some ministry things planned this summer. We want to reach out to the community. We got some giveaways, some things we want to do. And we need your help. We need you to be a blessing. We need to keep the lights on. You do all the things that you expect to see when you come in here. And so we thank you now in advance uh, for the things. All the security, it costs money. We want to make sure you're safe to clean this church and disinfect this church. It costs money. We want to make sure you're safe. We need you to give consistently as the Lord has blessed you to be able to give. Your tithe is non-negotiable and your offering is according to what you feel about God. On your way out, please, please, you can give by our app go to our app and you can give you can give at the kiosk with your debit or credit card on the way out or you can drop a cash check or money order or you can cash up app us at all caps dollar sign all caps new hope gary all right god bless you i love y'all the ushers will lead you out row by row starting from the rear please follow the leading of the ushers now may the grace of god the sweet communion of the holy spirit may it rest rule and abide with us both now and forever let every heart say amen tell somebody we're overcoming we're